Okay, in this video we're going to look at an example of solving an Euler differential equation. So that's a differential equation that has the form ax squared y double prime plus bxy prime plus cy equals zero, and its solution depends on the roots of this a polynomial known as the initial polynomial. So that's given by AR times R minus one plus BR plus C. And if those roots are distinct and real, we have a solution of the form C1 X to the R1 plus C2 X to the R2. If you have a repeated real root, you get the solution that C1 plus C2 natural log of X, all of that times X to the R1. And then if you have complex conjugate roots, you get these solutions that involve sines and cosines. Okay, so we'll look at two solutions to the following differential equation, x squared y double prime minus 9xy prime plus 25y equals zero. We'll do one that just builds right off this theorem, and then we'll do another one that uh, builds the solution from scratch. Okay, so the one that builds right off the theorem, so what we'll notice is that a equals one, b equals negative nine, and c equals 25 which means our initial polynomial is given by r times r minus 1 minus 9r plus 25. Okay, good. But now notice that's going to be r squared minus 10r plus 25, which gives us r minus 5 quantity squared. So in other words, we have a repeated root of r equals 5. Great, so that tells us our solution is of the form C1 plus C2 natural log of x, um, x to the fifth. Great, and that's just using the result from this theorem. And then, uh, furthermore, another result from this theorem that is not written over there is the interval um, on which the solution is valid is the interval zero to infinity. Okay, great. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at a second solution to this differential equation. Form y equals x to the r. We're going to populate the differential equation uh, using that guess. So we have y prime is r x to the r minus 1 and y double prime is r r minus 1 x to the r minus 2. Okay, great. So now from here, we're going to plug those into the differential equation and see what we get. Notice the x squared is going to raise that up to x to the r. The x is going to raise that up to x to the r. So I can factor all of that out of the right-hand side. So we have r times r minus 1 um, minus 9r plus 25 x to the r. So I pulled the x to the r out of the whole thing, so that's going to give me zero. But now notice I have the same polynomial that I was working with in the previous solution, and that had repeated roots, um, r equals 5. Great. So that means we know one solution to this differential equation is uh, y equals x to the fifth. So uh, now we'll use uh, Abel's identity to find the other solution to this differential equation. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll uh, do that because we don't really have enough room for it. Okay, our first solution was uh, y equals x to the fifth. Now we're going to use Abel's identity to find the second solution. And let's recall Abel's identity real quick. I have a video on it um, if you want to check that out. Um, but here it is. It says the Ronskian of the two solutions to the differential equation is given by some constant times the exponential of negative the integral of p of x dx. And let's just recall that p of x dx is given by the function multiplying y prime when the coefficient of y double prime is equal to 1. So that means we'll have to divide by x squared. So in our case, p of x is negative 9x divided by um, x squared. Great. So now we can say the Ronskian, which is also equal to the determinant of a certain matrix. So we can say that is uh, y1, y2, sorry, y1, y1 prime, y2, y2 prime. So in that case, we'll set y1 equal to our known solution. In other words, it's x to the fifth and then 
5 x to the fourth, and then y2 is our unknown solution. So there we have y, y prime. Okay, and then bringing this down, because c is an arbitrary constant, we can rewrite this as e to the negative antiderivative of p of x, which is negative 9x divided by x squared, so that's 9 over x dx, and we have a minus sign there. Okay, good. So now let's work on both sides of this. So notice the determinant of this matrix is gonna give us x to the fifth y prime minus five uh, x to the fourth y equals, and now we have e to the nine times natural log of x, which equals e to the natural log of x to the nine, which equals x to the ninth. Okay, good. So now what I'm going to do is divide everything by x to the fifth, and that's going to give me y prime minus uh, 5 over x, y equals x to the fourth. Okay, so I'll bring this up and clean up the board, and notice we can use a first order linear differential equation method for the final part. So we've motivated the fact that our second solution will uh, satisfy this first order linear differential equation given by y prime minus 5 over x y equals um, x to the fourth. And uh, let's recall that thing will have a solution 1 over alpha of x times the quantity, the antiderivative of alpha of x times b of x dx plus a constant, where in this case, alpha of x equals um, the antiderivative, or sorry, e to the antiderivative of a of x dx, which in this case is e to the antiderivative of this thing. So that's going to be negative 5 over x dx. Good. And then uh, b of x is equal to x to the fourth. Okay, great. So now, using a similar method to what we did in the previous step, we can see immediately that this is equal to x to the minus fifth. So that's equal to alpha, and now we can continue. So here we have y equals, so one over alpha will be x to the fifth. Great, and now we have um, the antiderivative, so alpha times b is one over x dx, and now we have that's plus a constant. Okay, good. And so notice we have here um, x to the fifth times the natural log of x plus a constant times x to the fifth. And so now we already have a solution of y equals x to the fifth. So we can take that one out. We already have that one. And so our other solution will be of the form x to the fifth natural log of x. And um, that's going to be connected to another constant that we like set equal to one um, using Abel's identity. So in the end, we have one solution is given by this. Another solution is given by that up there. And then since we have a homogeneous differential equation, any linear combination of those is a solution. So in other words, um, our most general solution is of the form C1 plus C2 natural log of x, x to the fifth. And that's the end of this video.